Hey hey, welcome back. It's been a busy start of the year and I have been redesigning my two heads from scratch again. And yeah, as you, as you can see, I have six running again, like full tool changer complement. And no tool changes here, but let me walk you through the tool head design. So this is what I used before the tap changer design. So it's running on six bearings and this was working fine one caveat that I had is that on with temperature changes it will kind of become more loose so you need to tighten it down cold very quite tightly and then it will reasonably work uh, otherwise it was working very well I just wanted to a new, have a new challenge so I made a new one and so here's the new one and uh, let me split it apart so it kind of comes in two parts so the the shuttle now has the part fan just a single one for now and the uh, tool head itself is very skeletal let me put it in a more light ah sun doesn't help back here uh so the Hot end itself is just attached to the tool head, there's no shroud, nothing, and just a fan blowing, yeah, cooling the tool head. And that's the whole idea of this, is just to kind of minimize the mass that's actually attached and move some of the mass to be permanently attached. So this whole thing just weighs just about 200 grams, like slightly less for using uh, a Revo hot end, slightly more with a Dragon hot end. And that is using like a custom setup with uh, gears integrated into the tool head. Uh, as you saw, I have an option for yeah, just mounting regular extruders. But I really like the gears integrated because it reduces the weight, reduces the path, filament path, good for flexibles. And yeah, overall it's also designed to have like very little screws so a lot of things are just snap in place and yeah so for the fan the power goes through these two pins so the overall design is very similar to what stealth changer did so we have like three pins going into the three bushings and uh, one change is that there's like a mix of pins and bushings on each part to maximize the distance like to kind of make a perfect triangle and make the triangle as big as possible so there's like two pins and a bushing on the shuttle and two bushings and a pin on the tool head and there is a third thing in the middle if you have if you did see this already so there's a bearing here and like a M2 bolt here, so they can interlock and add extra tension to keep this together. Because what one thing I found with stealth changer is that you either make it too stiff if you kind of don't align the pins perfectly, or it's can get loose and let, rattle around if it's too perfectly aligned. So this bearing in the middle provides that tension to keep things repeatable uh, yeah and here in the bushings I'm not sure if you can see that there is like a pogo pin down in each bushing to connect to uh, these pins and pro power the fan and that's probably the most um, tricky part about this design otherwise it's like super simple to print and assemble so for for the just extruder version there's a single part to print you just attach everything to this extruder at the top, tool head at the bottom, fan to the side, and uh, then there is these grooved slots for the detection switch, and at the end of this for the tool board. So tool board is uh, swapped around. So actually, like the back is to the back, just. Uh, I found this easier to assemble, so you can just, uh, it's a little bit tricky with one hand, yeah, so you just can, like this one is kind of very loose because it's just a test sample, so you can, all your wires connect them here and then you just close it up. And also in the previous design, 
you had essentially the two boards very close to the motor and now it's a bit of a distance away uh, and yeah, you can just slide it back on so I kind of like the screwless approach that, yeah I eliminate like four screws just to have previously you had four screws to just mount this thing and uh, so yeah I have two main designs one is just this flat thing for extruders and then there's this like with integrated gears so I'm using the large gears the Chinese large gear clones and they are like working really nicely I like them and then yeah you have these legs to attach to the dock and like for an external extruder is just like this single part plus yeah you need the, the part to hold the uh, tool board and then it's another part that clamps down the detection switch so it's just a single simple micro switch to detect if the tool is mounted or not mounted all right and uh, yeah right now i've been running into with just a single fan if you get like the top line like 15,000 rpm one it's okay I also have been working on a CPAP version of the same uh, with an integrated servo to um, to essentially open or close the air so this is just an experiment I have not tested this yet uh, that should be an answer if like a single fan is not not great and you want to like print PLA fast uh, so yeah really happy with this I will put out uh, like putting one together with you a bit later but yeah all the other things are kind of being distracted by this because initially it was kind of maybe works maybe it doesn't and it actually works really well uh, so both tap changer and this design like they're both solid it's just this is the sexy new thing now and uh, way easier to build and assemble a bit more tricky has more custom parts uh, maybe not true for custom parts so what this needs is the pins and the bushings and the small bearing what this needs is like the square uh, rods and the bearings the square rods go down in there like both have tension adjustability to kind of get it just right uh, this one is more optimized for another thing as well the distance between the shuttle so the shuttle uh, like the the M12 shuttle is the kind of the rigid part right so we want to have as rigid connection as possible between the rail and the actual tool head so the one of the design goals here was to kind of oops don't fall over was to get a good minimal distance minimal number of different interfaces between these two so the rail shuttle kind of screws in here then we have the uh, bushing sitting right next to it and then we have the pin and the pin is sitting right next to the uh, tool head and uh, the tool head slot not the tool head but the uh, hot end slot is designed in a way that it kind of it pushes against this place so there's like always it's always in contact so it's somewhat similar to what stealth burner does it, you kind of in stealth burner case you clamp it together from both sides in this case it's just push it against one side again minimizing the mass I could probably have like a thing going around oh yeah there's actually a groove for a zip tie not on this one that's an old design that's also an old design oh shoot all of these are old designs so I also put on the newer designs I also put in a groove so you can have a zip tie if you really want to tighten it down oh yeah it's here uh, just about visible uh, in practice I found it's not really necessary uh, jumping back to my printer I have been doing a few more other things so I'm experimenting with different tube sizes so initially I had like a piano wire going 
together with each of these tubes to make it rigid and if they were like smaller four millimeter tubes. Now I upgraded the six millimeter tubes and they are holding up by themselves very nicely. So no piano wire needed. And the latest one, the one that's currently printing, is running a five millimeter tube with three millimeter internal diameter. And that is plenty rigid by itself. And it also can go all the way down to the two head. Because for the other ones, I had to make like these small pieces of four millimeter tubing just to make it like flexible enough. The four six millimeter one was really, really rigid down there. So my next step is, yeah, upgrade all the tubing to five millimeter. I think that's the best middle ground. And then do a lot of printing, I suppose. I have done some multicolor printing tests already so far looking really good uh, yeah probably need to do more so yeah that's about it for today uh, what's next oh definitely design a dock that's static like right now I'm just using my lift bar thing that's probably over engineered for 19% of the cases and uh, yeah, then I need to get back to the small servo moved lift bar for Trident that's been sitting somewhere gathering dust for a while. Uh, all right, that's pretty much it. Oh, yeah, one super important thing. So uh, I have been using uh, Revo piezo sensor with this. So one of the things this does not have is an accurate bed sensor it just has this switch which is intended oh, it's hard to hold on which is intended for uh, just detection not for homing so that is a simplification of the design that only one two head has a homing sensor and also experimenting with piezo uh, for so far, I have mixed experiences with the Revo piezo. It's really sensitive to fan noise and stuff, so homing at hot temperatures is really hit or miss. Uh, but yeah, like another goal of this design, redesign of the hot end, is to just make it cheap, simple, and getting rid of all the sensors is also one of the ways to do that. So cool, uh, let me know what you think and uh, see you soon with the next update.